All right. So now we are back. I'm gonna finish this map. We're going to top him off as we pass by. Now we're just going to be a pilot vehicle now for this other truck to just get through this swamp back to the main main road. There we go. Take damage. We're gonna burn up so much fuel. Well, that is okay. So definitely uh, going to be playing some multiplayer with SnowRunner. Uh, Join the Facebook group. Um, And I know there's a lot of people very eager to do multiplayer. The one question I, ha I don't know the answer to yet, and I haven't asked, haven't seen it asked, is is the game going to support voice, or is that, are they left that up to third party, you know, the players to figure that out? I know sometimes smaller dev teams or games, they, they don't really have, I guess, the resources or they don't want to devote the time. Interesting. It'd be nice if it was just included in the game because you know, I, you know TeamSpeak servers, somebody has to pay for them. Um, I don't know if I've never done voice chat on uh, Discord, so I'm not sure how that works. Okay, I don't want to go. So we're going left. This is the main drag here. Whoa. I don't know if we're going to make this turn. Get that tree down. Oh, dear. Uh, get him. Get him. There we go. I'll start paying attention to where I'm actually driving now. Oh, I didn't top off the uh, log truck. He's going to run out of gas. For sure. Before we get to the lumber mill. Let's see how far along we are. That's a lot of shitty road right there. Alright, let's um I kinda don't want to get too far away from my fuel truck, so I'm gonna bring this up close. Oh, really? 
that. Sure. I definitely went the right way. I didn't actually look left the last time we made this turn, but right was definitely the correct answer. See, dangerous water level. Like, do you guys see how high the engine is on this truck? Like, like all that vented metal is... That's the engine bay, and that's where the engine is. Behind the driver, above the frame of the truck. <sighs> I don't get it. Because with a dual axle front, there's no room for an engine down low. Like, you have to have freedom of movement for both axles, and steering linkages, and all that stuff. Like, there's no room to put an engine down low. So it's ridiculous how low water, or how little water it takes to damage this truck. That's, that's ridiculous. I hope they improved that in SnowRunner as well. So once we get on this road, I mean, we've pretty much beat, beat the map because I've got a pretty much a fuel. A, 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 I think it's trying to say full and fuel on the same word. I have a full fuel truck, you know, pulling the other log truck. So it's not like I'm going to run out of fuel. Pretty much have a main, although very muddy, uh, road to get me to the lumber mill. So pretty much wrapped up this map. Um, the wind's in the bag. So it's just a matter of getting there now. If this was multiplayer, we could hook up all three trucks and just roll out like that, I think. No, because I don't, see, I don't think you can have two winches attached to one truck. So, uh, so you know, this is kind of a farewell to Mud Runner, uh, and one of the biggest things I was just noticing as we look, we have kind of a long view here, is the fog. Um, Snow Runner's draw distance is much greater than Mud Runner, and the skies, depending on weather, can be clear for miles, and it's it doesn't have a washed out look to it. Um, there's so much more color and contrast. Just that alone makes it look like a better game. I mean, even even if you took this engine and this game and just, you know, upped the color contrast and got rid of the fog, it would look better. Um, so, you know, SnowRunner is definitely going to be a much more visually appealing game. And it'll, you know, under certain weather conditions, it'll look dreary and foggy, I'm sure. But it's not going to look like this all the time, where it's just incessant <laughs> fog layer or haze. So, And there's going to be, like, uh, mountains in the distance and stuff. Because you can obviously tell, well, we can't tell because I don't know if that's fog or there's just nothing, nothing in the background. There's no distant... Uh, sky boxes or landscape boxes or whatever you want to call them. So that's something to say goodbye to. It is a much more engrossing, uh, immersive experience as far as visuals and distant visuals. So when you're driving around, there's actually like scenery to look at. So that would be pretty dang nice. I think I'm approaching the lumber mill. Let's get out of this mud hole. And then we'll check. 
Oh, it's about halfway, wow. Okay. So, that'll be something, you know, that'll be something to say goodbye to, is the drab, dreary atmosphere of Mud Runner and Spin Tires. Snow Runner is going to be so much better looking. I don't even know if there's mods for Mud Runner that maybe change the atmospherics and stuff. Um, probably are. I don't know. Oh, you know what? I haven't looked. Do they have this truck in Snow Runner? This is like, you know, this is like the, this is the big boy, you know, like the, the beast of Mud Runner. I hope it's in Snow Runner, or an approximation. Well, no, I kind of hope the exact truck is. Let's look at that. I know they got that new. Uh, is it called the Antarctic truck? Something like that. All right. Well, we're basically at lumber mill. We don't have to care about fuel anymore. Let's just go whole hog. Eight by eight. Engage. See, I love, you go through the water and it cleans your truck off. It cleans your tires off. You can see the mud fall off the tires when you go through the water. That's just good shit, man. That's like something that's never been seen in games before this that I'm aware of. I see, look, then they get dirty again. Uh, but the kind of... Um, the flat texture of the tires is going away. It looks like at least on the high graphical settings. All right, here comes the rock and roll music. Let's get over to the side here. Oh, I guess I can just pull this truck out of the way once I unload. There we go. Oh, look how quick it accelerates now. Heck yeah. All right. See, it shows the engine that high. Like, I don't understand. Oh, God, I hope they fix that. Okay, let's finish this. Because we're... Dang, we've almost hit 20 minutes again, almost. Let's see if we can do it without the uh, fuel. T well, nope. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I have to top off for sure. No. <sighs> well, <laughs> I guess if I was role playing, we'd be like, all right, turn off your engine to uh, refuel. But with diesels, that's not true. You leave diesels running all day long. Even when you're refueling. There we go. Let's see if we can make this an auto, all-wheel drive. So, I know... Oh, uh, I got a correct myself on something I said in a previous video, even if you didn't watch that video. I said you can blow up your engine by shifting up into high gears and low range on a truck, and that's, that's not true, because your engine actually, uh, what you would blow up, your engine would be fine. I mean, obviously you're tacking out any engine, you're probably going to damage it either way. Uh, what will blow up first is actually the transfer case, uh, or your transmission will blow up. It will, well, the transfer case will probably blow up because 
basically you would be spinning the input gear at incredible speeds and it's reducing that down so like Basically, when you put something in low range, those gears, before they get, you know, they're going to be spinning so fast that you probably blow up your transfer case, not your engine. Now, I mean, yes, obviously, it's, you can max out your motor, and depending on your gear ratio, you know, you're only going, you're still only going like 10 miles an hour, maybe, if that. Uh, they actually have a like low range competitions. I think I've seen them in Europe, where basically you have to floor the truck or tractor, and the slowest vehicle wins. Like, so it's pretty funny. No, I'm not there already, right? Not even close. So, you know, in that scenario, you know, your engine would be just revved to the max. But those gears, those transmission, well, really, the transfer case, gears would be spinning so fast. Is this where... Hey! Smooth shift end of high here. Nice. Look at that. She's moving too. See, I just don't... I don't understand how this gear system works. Like, I kind of get the low range with three selections. It's like, okay... Your transfer case is in low, and we'll give you access to your first three gears. You know, so you still we're still going to limit your speed. Um, and you, well, you are in low range, but you can still get up to third gear, let's say. But then there's one plus, which is that like your? I don't. Yeah, I I don't get it. Um, see them are stalling out. So then it makes me think, oh, well, you're not actually in low range. You're, you're switching into high range. But I don't know of any 4x4 system where you can switch from low to high on the fly. Like, that would blow the motherfucker up. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Man, I'm going to have to start watching my language, too. Damn it. So, yeah, I don't I don't know of any... That's why I kind of I don't get this gear system that you... Like, the gear selection. I don't really understand what OnePlus is. I, I, I think I'm kind of understanding what low range is. It's like, okay, transfer case, you put it in low, and then you have access to... You know, first, second, and third, maybe. But then what is one plus? It's like... Because in one plus, you can still have your diff lock and all-wheel drive engaged. But in automatic mode, you don't get diff lock, which... That doesn't make any sense either, guys. Like, it, a lot of diff locks are always on. Um... Selectable diff locks are expensive. Anyways, here we go. This should be it. Should have done... I got... Unlocked all trucks. All garages. All watch points. Yeah. And one star. Nice. Okay, cool.
Uh, I think I'll do... I don't know what I'm going to do next. See if I can finish all the maps before SnowRunner comes out. Alright guys, we'll see you next time.